My name's Patricia Worth. I'm going to read to you from The Wolf, my translation of Le Loup by Marcel Aimé, first published in 1932, and my translation was published in 2018 in Delos Journal. Hiding behind the hedge, the wolf was patiently watching the house. At last, he had the satisfaction of seeing the parents come out of the kitchen. As they stepped out the door, they offered one last word of advice to their daughters. Remember, they said, not to open the door to anyone, even if they beg or threaten you. We'll be back at nightfall. When he saw the parents far away at the last bend in the path, the wolf made his rounds of the house, limping with a gammy leg but the doors were all closed. There was no point in looking over at the pig pen and cow shed. Those species don't have enough brains to let you convince them they should be eaten. So the wolf stopped outside the kitchen, placed his front paws on the window ledge and looked inside. Delphine and Marinette were playing jacks by the stove. Marinette, the smaller girl, who was also blonder, was saying to her sister Delphine, when there are only two of us, it's not much fun. We can't play ring a ring a rosy. It's true, we can't play ring a ring a rosy, or hide and seek, or follow the leader, or Simon says, or statues, or piggy in the middle. And yet, what's more fun than playing ring a ring a rosy, or hide and seek? Oh, if only there were three of us. As the little girls had their backs to the wolf, he tapped on the window pane with his nose to let them know he was there. They left their game and came to the window hand in hand. Hello, said the wolf. It's not warm outside, it's nippy, you know. The blonder one started to laugh because she found him funny with his pointy ears and his tuft of prickly fur on top of his head. But Delphine was not deceived. She squeezed the smaller girl's hand and said quietly, It's the wolf. The wolf? said Marinette. So, are we afraid? Of course we're afraid. The girls trembled and held each other tightly, their blonde hair and whispers mingling. The wolf had to admit he had not seen anything so pretty since the days he used to run through woods and over plains. He was quite touched by it. What's wrong with me, he thought. I've gone weak at the knees. Thinking it over, he realised he had suddenly become good. So good and so gentle that he could never again eat children. The wolf leant his head to the left, as one does when one is good, and put on his softest voice. I'm cold, said he, and my leg hurts. But what's most important is that I'm good. If you'd like to open the door for me, I could come in and warm myself by the stove and we could spend the afternoon together. The girls looked at each other, a little surprised. They would never have suspected that the wolf could speak so sweetly. Already feeling reassured, the blonder one gave him a friendly wave. But Delphine, who did not lose her head so easily, soon regained her composure. Go away, she said. You're the wolf. You understand, said Marinette, with a smile, it's not that we want to send you away, but our parents have forbidden us to open the door even if someone begs or threatens us. Then the wolf sighed deeply, and his pointy ears lay down on each side of his head. They could see he was sad. You know, he said, people tell many stories about the wolf, but you mustn't believe everything they say. The truth is, I'm not wicked at all. He sighed deeply again, which brought tears to Marinette's eyes. The girls were troubled to know that the wolf was cold and his leg was hurting. The blonder one whispered something in her sister's ear while winking at the wolf to let him know she was on his side. Delphine remained pensive, for she did not make decisions lightly. He looks nice enough, she said, but I don't trust him. Remember the story, The Wolf and the Lamb? and yet the lamb had done nothing to him. As the wolf was protesting that his intentions were good, she shot back. 
What about the lamb? Yes, the lamb you ate. The wolf was not disconcerted by this. The lamb I ate, said he. Which one? He said this quite calmly, like something simple, something that goes without saying, and with an expression and a hint of innocence that sent chills down their spines. What? So you've eaten lots of them, cried Delphine. Well, you're a fine one. But naturally I've eaten lots of them. I don't see what's wrong with that. You eat plenty of lamb yourselves. There was no way they could deny it. They had just had a leg of lamb for lunch.